Hey, what's up everybody? Goo Kill here, and now that we're a few days into Diablo Season 3, the name of the game has been How Can I Get Gear? How Can I Farm Efficiently? And for some of us who have gone through the initial couple days of grinding and we've gotten a few pieces of gear that allow us to be able to do a higher torment difficulty, there's been the questions going around of how, how can I build towards something that I'm going to be able to farm quickly and be able to get gear faster. Well, today's video, I'm going to show you guys the spec that's my favorite and what I like to use the most. I play the Barbarian this season. I'm going to be playing Barbarian, I think, every season from here on out. This spec rocks. Whirlwind, spin to win, baby, is what I'm talking about. And I'm going to show you guys what I'm using to blast my way through Torment 6 Rifts. I'm going to start the game up here, let it load up. Um, as you can see, I'm using two one-handed weapons. What? Yeah, I'm using two one-handed weapons, and I'll get into the details of that as we load up the game here. So, um, where to start? So, I'm just going to bring up the gear. So, the spec that I'm using, it's very, very, very gear-dependent. So, it's based around using three different sets. Um, two of these sets, unfortunately cannot use the Royal Ring of Grandeur. You need to have the two pieces. Um, so that means you're going to have to equip the entirety of the Immortal King set, or at least six pieces of it. There are seven available. So um, that means you're going to need the Immortal King Helm, the Immortal King Chest, the Immortal King Belt, the Immortal King Legs, the Immortal King Feet, and the Immortal King Gloves. What this does, as I will leave this up so you guys can read the set bonuses, it makes it so that your Call of the Ancients can't die. It means that for every Fury, 10 Fury that you spend, it'll reduce the cooldown of Wrath of the Berserker and Call of the Ancients by 3 seconds. And then the 6 set means that while both your Wrath of the Berserker and Call of the Ancients is active, by the way, your Call of the Ancients is always active, you will deal 100% increased damage, which is phenomenal. If you're doing this build right, you will have Wrath of the Berserker up permanently which means that you're always dealing 100 percent increased damage the other two sets that this is built around one is the focus restraint set so focus restraint are rings um, preferably you want it to roll with your main stat critical hit chance of critical hit damage but the bonus from this set is good enough that you can probably get away with having vitality or cooldown reduction whatever it is as long as you can use this set so the reason why we want to use this is that the set bonus for it is that whenever you hit with a resource generating attack, you deal 50% increased damage for 5 seconds. Or when you hit with a spending attack, you deal 50% increased damage for 5 seconds. These stack so that you have another 100% increased damage for your character, which means you should always have 200% increased damage. That's insane. Last but not least, we're going to get to the weapons, the two one-handers that I'm using, the Bullcathos set. So... Preferably, you want to have this role, you know, ideally ancient. You want to be able to use Ramalandi's gifts. Uh, I have not gotten those pieces of gear yet, so I'm just trying to do the best with what I got. But socket is critical. Main stat is critical. The reason we want to use this is because the two weapons give you increased fury generation by 10. And during whirlwind, you gain 30% increased attack speed and movement speed. As we talked about at the beginning of the video, this video and build is about speed, 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 and the movement speed has absolutely no comparison. The bracers that I use for this build, uh, there's a couple different ways that you can go, but just for the sake of not really having to think about what's going on with your Fury, I use Reaper's Wraps. You spawn a ton of health globes, and by you killing things so fast, tons of health globes drop. It pretty much leaves you at permanently 100% Fury. Um, obviously, the bonus on Reaper's Wraps is your health globes restore 26% of your primary resource. The amulet is not particular. This is the best amulet that I've found this season. Just having basic strength, crit damage, crit hit chance, and a socket for you to be able to put gems into. And then the shoulders. Um, you can go a bunch of different ways with this because um, it's a standalone shoulder piece. It's not going to go together with any set. You can use Death Watch Mantle. You can use Pauldrons of the Skeleton King. Uh, you could use Profane Pauldrons. You could use... Uh, the what are the pauldrons called that? I can't remember what they are that make your items indestructible. But I like to use this one because it has a 35% chance to explode in a fan of knives for 750 to 950% weapon damage, which is just added AoE damage, which is always great for clearing out rifts. The legendary gems I use for this build, I use Pain Enhancer because it 
causes critical hits to cause enemies to bleed around you for 2100% weapon damage at rank 30. Obviously it starts out at 1200% at rank 1. And then you really want the secondary effect which you get at rank 25. Gain Blood Frenzy, granting you 3% increased attack speed for every bleeding enemy. So again, increased attack speed means that when we get down to the Whirlwind Rune, we're using Dust Devils, you're going to spawn more Tornadoes. We use Tegooks because you are constantly spending your primary resource. You should never not be Whirlwinding. So this is just going to create a stacking effect, which gives you increased damage and increased armor. Increased damage, increased survivability are awesome. And then the third gem that I'm using, I'm just using a damage reduction gem in Esoteric Alteration, but you could also go with Bane of the Trapped or a more offensive gem since Torment 6, you're not really worried about survivability if you're rocking this gear. This is pretty top tier gear to have. It's very, very gear specific, but once you can achieve this gear at some level, um, you're going to find that your farming capability is going to go up really quick. As far as Paragon Point Allocation, you want to Go completely into your movement speed, cap it out so that you are able to just have main stats on your boots. Uh, strength, vitality, resist all whirlwind damage is optimal. After that, dump your points into strength. For offense, the way that I've done it is I put points into critical hit chance until my critical hit chance is over 40% at least. Then I put everything into critical hit damage and then everything into attack speed. For defense, you want to pour it into resist all first. Then you want to do life percent and then armor. And then for utility, I go resource cost reduction because obviously we are constantly using whirlwind. So any resource re cost reduction you get is great. And I go into life on hit, area damage, and then gold find. We'll break down the skills a little bit here. So our primary skill, we're using bash punish. Um, really, the only reason that you're using this skill is so that you can gain the added effect from focus restraint. When you hit with a resource generating attack, you deal 50% increased damage. The rune that we use for this is Punish because every time you use Punish, you increase your damage by 4% for 5 seconds and it stacks up to 3 times. So you want to keep the effect stacked up to 3 times because it's an increased 12% damage from the rune and then also the 50% from the Focus Restraint. The Whirlwind rune that we use, obviously this is the bread and butter of the build, it's going to be Dust Devils. So generate harsh tornadoes that deal 120% weapon damage to enemies in their path. While whirlwinding, you move at 100% movement speed. So our movement speed isn't hindered. And with the amount of attack speed that we have going, we're going to spawn dust devils like crazy. We're going to use Call the Ancients because they're permanent. We're going to use the Together as One Rune, which causes 50% of all damage dealt to you to instead be divided evenly. So this is like a unity effect. You're going to have your damage divided up. So this pretty much ensures that you're never going to die. Wrath of the Berserker, which we should have 100% uptime. Sometimes you're going to have a few seconds in between, but this is our big cooldown. It increases our critical hit chance, our attack speed, our movement speed, and 50% increased damage. So when you do all the calculations, you've got 50% increased damage from Berserker, 100% from Immortal King, you've got 100% from Focus Restraint, and another 12% from Bash Punish. You can see where it's going. We got we got some big deeps going on here. We're going to use Sprint to just increase our movement speed with our Fury Regeneration the way that it is. You can pretty much spam this through the entire Rift, and you're going to fly through it. And then we're going to use Battle Rage, which increases our critical hit chance, our damage by 10%, and it's also going to make our critical hits, which we have a significant amount of critical hit chance. It's going to make them have an 8% chance to drop Hulk Globes, which is going to give us Fury Regeneration. For the passive skills, um, the optional one I have here is Weapon Master. Uh, with the two swords, you're going to deal another 8% increased damage. If you wanted to, you could also go with Boon of Bolkathos just in case you have your Wrath of the Berserker falling off and you want the 100% uptime. This will essentially guarantee that you have 100% uptime. But overall, if you're spending your Fury consistently, it shouldn't be a problem. Take the 8% increased damage with Weapons Master. Brawler means as long as there's enemies... Three enemies within 12 yards, all of your damage is increased by 20%. Berserker Rage, you deal 25% additional damage while near maximum fury. And Rampage, increase strength by 1% for 8 seconds after killing or assisting in killing an enemy. This effect stacks up to 25 times. So pretty much every single skill here, except for Sprint, is increasing our damage percent on a multiplier. 
And what I'm going to do for you guys now is I'm going to go into a Torment 6 Rift and show you guys the capability and play style of this. So generally starting your game, first thing you want to do is drop down your Ancients, get your Battle Rage going, and then from here on out, you can start sprinting until you see mobs. You can see the Fury Regeneration is not falling. Let's get our Berserker up, and there we go. Start Bash to get your damage up, and start spinning to winning. So as you can see, the damage and speed of this build is great. So you see I got rooted there, I had Wrath of the Berserker fall off a little bit. But you can pretty much hold down your Whirlwind and absolutely blast through these mobs. In a lot of ways you don't even need to keep the bash stacking effect up because you just deal so much damage to elites, to normal mobs. So we're maybe a minute into this rift, and we're already halfway done. Mind you, this has been a pretty good rift for density, and outdoor rifts generally are. But we haven't let go of our whirlwind. Gotten two legendaries. Fury's not going down at all. Now the one place where this build kind of lacks is in the Rift Guardian department. And that's just because this build is not like the wizard builds that are out there. It's not critting for 1.3 billion. It does a lot of damage though, as you can see here. So there you have it folks, if I wanted to you could blast through the rest of the rift I'm sure if you were full clearing, but as you can see, it's pretty fun, it's pretty fast, and it gets the job done. Loots we got from that, we got a Leoric's Crown, and we got a Salvage Axe. But there you have it guys, so that's been, you know, my favorite build to run for Torment 6. It's also very viable for greater rifts if you're doing them in groups, although ideally you would probably want better weapons as the damage really starts to lack in Greater Rift 40+. plus. But for Greater Rift 30 to 39, this build is very, very fast. It deals a lot of damage, and you're able to have quite a bit of survivability because of your Ancient splitting all the damage. So that's the video. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope it was informative. If you have any questions, just feel free to hit me up on Twitter, hit me up on my Twitch channel, or hit me up in the YouTube comments below. I'll do my best to answer any questions I will get some more Barbarian build videos up. I plan on doing a two-handed Whirlwind build. I plan on doing a Season 3 Raycor build. And I'm trying to make it work. I'm not sure if it will. But I'd really like to see if we can do anything with the Earth set, whether it's support or whether it's able to clear rifts, because Leap Quaking is pretty fun. So thanks for watching the video, guys. Hope it was informative. See you down the road.